Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do an update video on news regarding the Powerwall 3. Now, there's already a video on my channel about the Powerwall 3. It has a lot more information and I try not to repeat most of it in this one. This is just more of an update as it is finally available to installers in the USA. Now, based on the almighty internet, the UK can expect it a little bit later this year or in late 2024, similar for Australia in the third or the fourth quarter of 2024. It's almost summer, by the way. But if you are not in the USA, then at least you get to see what our experiences with those units before you decide if this is what you wanna do for your home. Now, if you are in North Texas or DFW area, make sure to reach out to me as well if you would like to get a quote. All that info is in the description below. Now, let's finish the chit chat and get right to it. Of course, if you do like this video, make sure to click on that big like button, leave some comments down below, and subscribe to the channel. <sighs> now, like, do it right now. <laughs> All right, let's start with surge capacity and AC output. Looking at the surge capacity, I was able to confirm that the Powerwall 3 has a surge capacity of 185 LRA, which is really, really good. This is good enough to start up an AC unit as large as five tons. Now, this means that even during peak demand periods, your Powerwall can handle that initial surge required to get your AC system running smoothly. Now, Keep in mind that starting the AC and actually keeping it running are seriously two different things. So if you have a five ton AC unit, yes, you can start it in an outage, but most of those units will use four to eight kilowatts, which in hours or in time is four to eight kilowatt hours per hour of usage. So you could literally drain your battery in less than three hours. So just keep that in mind. I've also verified that the Powerwall 3 has a maximum AC output of 11.5 kilowatts. However, if your solar system is producing more than 11.5, up to additional five kilowatts can be actually directed to charge the battery itself. So if your solar panels are generating, let's say 16 kilowatts, 11.5 will go to your home or back to the grid, while the remaining kilowatts will then be stored in your power wall for later use. Now this is actually incredible news because we can DC a lot of panels to one of those units without too much worry about actual clipping. This is becoming a very popular way of power use in those battery systems. SMA has a very similar setup to where you oversize those inverters significantly and just use that extra DC to charge the battery directly, not just clip the extra power solar connectivity and recommended ratio. It is important to note that while the Powerwall 3 can support up to 20 kilowatts of connected solar, Tesla recommends a DC to AC ratio of 1.7 for optimal performance. 11.5 kilowatts AC output times 1.7 equals to 19.5 kilowatts. Now, this also depends on the actual layout of your panels and where in the world you are. Someone who has a perfect south facing roof in the southern USA like Texas may want to limit the oversizing compared to someone who has east and west facing panels as that system will never actually hit the same power output in one moment in time as the one facing south. Stormwatch feature and warranty. One of the standout features of Powerwall 3 is its Stormwatch capability. If the system detects a severe weather alert in your area, it will automatically begin charging from the grid to ensure you have a full battery in case of a power outage. Now this provides that added peace of mind during inclement weather events. Another significant advantage of the Powerwall 3 is its comprehensive warranty, which includes 
labor payouts to installers. Now, this is a key differentiator from many other solar manufacturers who often offer long equipment warranties like 20, 25 years, but do not cover the cost of labor for repairs or replacements. Now, based on my experience, both Solar Edge, SMA always paid out a nice labor reimbursement for replacing their units under warranty. So I'm very, very glad that Tesla is doing this as well. Now, you may ask, why is this even important to you as the homeowner? Well, if your installer offers a labor warranty, this helps them replace your units without charging you any more or just a little bit more. Also, if your installer is no longer in business, then this will be very helpful to you to offset the cost of the other installer's labor. Now, this is not in no way enough to make profit for installers, but this helps both the installer to stay financially stable and continue continuously installing their product. Stuff like this is not free and the manufacturer helping the installer and the homeowner here is huge. So thank you to Tesla for doing this as well. And other manufacturers, listen and learn. DC expansion packs and maximum capacity. Looking ahead, Tesla is planning to release DC expansion packs later this year, which will cost approximately $1,000 less than the Powerwall 3 itself. Each Powerwall 3 can support up to three expansion packs, bringing the total capacity to 54 kilowatt hours per a whole unit as a whole. It's important to note that adding expansion packs does not increase the actual power output beyond that base 11.5 kilowatt it only increases the storage capacity or how much juice you can actually store. Now, for those looking to maximize their energy storage, a home can have up to four main power wall three units, each with these three expansion packs. Now, this configuration would provide a massive 216 kilowatt hours of storage capacity and a combined power output of 46 kilowatts. Most of us really do not need that big of a system, but expansion units are great for homeowners with systems smaller than 20 kilowatts, but with needed capacity of more than just one battery pack. Battery chemistry. There has been some speculations about the battery chemistry used in the Tesla Powerwall 3. Some have actually claimed that Tesla has confirmed the use of lithium iron phosphate, LFP cells, which would be a significant improvement from their nickel manganese cobalt NMC cells used in Powerwall 2. LFP batteries are known for their longevity, safety, and stability, and they're bigger. However, I've been unable to verify this information at all. Oddly, Tesla has not disclosed the specific battery chemistry used in the Powerwall 3, and this conspicuous absence of information is leading me to believe that Tesla might not actually use LFB cells, because why not brag about this? Now, this is not the end of the world. We have seen Powerwall 2 with NMC for seven years now in home use with almost no bad accidents or bad stories. Additionally, some discussions have pointed out that Powerwall 3 has a lower weight compared to other batteries with similar capabilities that use LFP chemistry. Now, this weight difference could be another indication that Tesla has opted out for a different battery chemistry. While I hope to be proven wrong, the lack of transparency from Tesla regarding the battery chemistry and the observations about the weight difference are making me suspect that the Powerwall 3 does not use LFP cells. It is puzzling though why Tesla would not openly promote the use of LFP batteries given their superiority to NMC cells unless they're intentionally trying to avoid disclosing this information. Or it's just simply cheaper to use NMC. But again, not a big deal. The Tesla Powerwall 3 boasts impressive features like high storage capacity, stormwatch feature, and a comprehensive warranty on top of being incredibly priced. The upcoming DC expansion packs will provide even greater flexibility for homeowners looking to scale their energy storage. However, the battery chemistry used in the Powerwall 3 remains a mystery still, with Tesla avoiding the mention of it. Now, regardless of the battery chemistry, the Powerwall 3 remains a strong contender in the home battery 
battery market. And I will be sure to update you if, if any new information comes to light. Now remember, if you are in DFW area, give us a call for a quote. Otherwise, just leave a nice comment, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.